with Mojo Designs and it is Fabulous Friday. Yay! Alright, so I have that adorable image from Sugar Creek Hollow. We're going to color it with Copics. I have E33, E27, E25, E29, my colorless blender. I have YR16, R05, YR07, W7, W3, and W1. Let's start with the pumpkins. Now I know that I pick some of these colors are not in the same color family, like one's red, one's yellow, and two are yellow red. Um, but I'm going to be using them and blending them together, and as you can see here, they complement each other very well, and it does allow for some contrast. And I did um, bring in my W's, which is my warm grays, because when you use warm, uh, warm 3, W3, warm gray 3, and you put it over any one of these oranges, it dingies it up a little bit. It adds that layer of gray to that warm gray to the colors. And as you can see down here, it may have removed the color just a little bit, but it did darken. It did darken it up, and that's what I'm looking for. Now, if I use the W1, that would definitely act like a colorless blender and remove color. So if I kept doing that, that orange, that R05 color, which is salmon red, as you can see, is starting to disappear. So that's why I chose the three colors that I chose for the pumpkins. So I do want to take, I thought I didn't make a note, I want to take my lightest, which is my YR16 apricot. And my light source is going to be coming from this direction. So that's the left hand side. So I'm going to be leaving some white spots on the top of these pumpkins. I will be going back over that at a later time. So they're not all going to stay white. But I'm doing that because each time you lay down the same color of Copic, It adds it a half of a shade darker. And I'm not being too precise with the stems because we're going to, I'm going to use my R29, which is my burnt umber, to color that in. And this is such a light orange, an apricot. It's not going to be that big a deal. My next is YR07, and I'm going to come in, and yes, I do want definition on all those little segments, but right now I'm just doing the big picture, just doing big picture coloring. I'm not worrying about the detail quite yet. Come in, laying in that color. Going back over it with my apricot, which is the YR16, just to blend that through. Now the yellow reds that we're using, we this will blend fairly quickly and fairly easily without it, um, without having any issues. Now bringing in this red 05, there's going to have to be um, we're going to have to pay more attention to blending. See, I lost my train of thought. And of course I want my darkest.
colors that are, you know, especially the pumpkins that are hidden in there, they're going to be your darkest. No light is going to be hitting them. Like the light hits the one, the pumpkins on the top. Then take our YR07 and we're going to blend that and I'm flicking in some color. And when you're flicking in color, use this piece, if you're starting from the bottom, it's really bad, there we go, and you're pressing and then you're letting up, I need to do it from this side. And you can get even smaller flicks of color, so you're just flicking in. You're not, um, you want your most of your color to be at your base. And then you're letting up so that it goes to the point so you're getting more of a feather. And when you're blending, different colors, um, that's a really good technique. And the R05 and the YR07, there is some contrast. They're still in the same red family. One leans more towards the yellow side and one is obviously all a part of the red family. Then we'll come back in and we're going to color our tops with the YR16. And then we're going to flip color in from the bot from the top towards the middle and we have a nice blended gradient pumpkin which isn't bad but that's why we're gonna go back in with our warm gray and we're gonna add some more shadows and we're gonna add a little more contrast which will help um, making the image pop I'm going to take my E29 and just, again, I'm, I'm flicking in the color here. And the reason for this, the stem, they're so little, I don't want to use a heavy hand and go outside of the lines. Now, it doesn't look bad. Oh, I forgot that jack down there. But it's going to look even better once we add in this. I'm first going to get these pumpkins that are kind of hidden. Or that, you know, in inside there. And then I'm going to go for the pumpkins that are on top of another. Because that those are my easy points that I know the shading. I don't have to guess because... If it's on top of another pumpkin, it's going to be dark in that area. There's no guessing there. There's even going to be a shadow on the pumpkins that, like this one, that's kind of off to the side, but it's in front of this one. Then I am taking just a few of the segments and adding that color from the warm gray. And as you remember, our lightest was at the top. And I do see that this didn't blend as much as I'd like. So you just go back and look in some color. Now even though we added the warm gray, there is a difference, but it's a subtle difference.